A custom built enclosure for your 3D printer can be a great way to improve the quality of your prints. Stick around and I'll show you how I built mine. Hey, welcome to the shop there fellow maker. I'm Bill. Today I'm going to show you how I built this custom enclosure for my Ultimaker 3D printer. Why would you build such a monstrosity for your machine? The most important reason is to keep hot air in and to keep everything in there at a nice constant temperature. Now I plan on doing a lot more printing with ABS filament on this machine and keeping the hot air in will help with warping and keeping the print nice and flat on the bed as well as improving the print quality. I got this specific design idea from my friend Harrison over at Vulpen Props. He's been doing tons of 3D printing with his high-end prop making over at his shop. He's got three Ultimakers. They've been all using ABS filament and his prints come out awesome. To keep his team of machines printing at optimal performance, he built enclosures just like this for all three of them. So a huge thanks goes out to Harrison for the pointers on this build. Please head on over to his site to check out his incredible inspiring work. I'll have links to all of his stuff down in the description. For this particular build, I ended up spending about 30 bucks. All the parts were from the hardware store. Of course, I also had a bunch of those things kind of lying around in the shop. The main component for this build is this inch thick pink rigid insulation foam. I shopped around and found that Home Depot carries these small project sheets in just the right thickness, whereas Lowe's only had large two inch thick sheets. Like I said, the rest of the components were picked up at the hardware store, including screws, clear plastic and hinges. I'll have links down in the description to everything I used. I started by measuring everything on my Ultimaker so I could come up with a basic game plan for my box. The sides were cut out of my pretty pink foam sheets. I found that these two foot long sheets were just a little bit short so I attached one of the cut off strips to one side of that using some aluminum tape. Before committing to cutting out both of the side panels, I made sure to check my work against the side of my printer to make sure it was on the mark. Then I cut out the other side and the back panel. With those sides all prepped, I attached them to one another using three inch long drywall screws. I tried to be as gentle as possible with the screws to avoid punching all the way through the foam or stripping the soft foam with those metal screws. Once I confirmed that the printer did indeed fit in my box, I got started on the front. This was made from several several pieces of foam to leave an opening for the door. They were cut to size and screwed into the front. Thinner strips were cut out for the sides of this door frame. These were then cut to length and also screwed into the face. My last sheet of foam was laid on top of the box and traced to come up with the dimensions I would need. This was then cut out with my sharp knife and a ruler. I also cut out a little trap door for the top of the enclosure. I sanded the edges of this door so that it would be able to open with only a little bit of resistance. The top of the printer box box was screwed on and then I added a little handle on that trap door which was made out of more of that aluminum tape. To make this little door easy to open, I screwed on a pair of hinges. This door is designed so that I have the option of opening it up and letting hot air out. This is in case the printer actually gets too hot. Back to the front of the enclosure, I cut out the bottom part from the remaining foam sheet. I didn't see any easy way to screw this on to the rest of the frame, so I used more of that magical aluminum tape to stick it in place, making sure to tape both the front and back of the seam. This tape was also used to cover up any other seams on the frame where heat might try and escape. To provide some structural support for my door, I cut out a couple strips of PVC plastic. I drilled several holes through these pieces as well as through the foam. Then I fed bolts through, making a sturdy PVC foam sandwich. The door itself was cut out from a sheet of PETG plastic that I had laying around. I cut it to dimension with a sharp knife and a little bit of brute force. Then I laid out my hinge holes and carefully drilled them out using a step bit. This was to prevent that thin plastic from splitting. The hinges were then attached to the plastic door using machine screws, washers, and nuts. My doorknob was made from a spare resin casting that I had laying around. This was also attached with a machine screw. I then taped my door in place and screwed the hinges into that PVC plastic support that I had installed earlier. This should provide a super sturdy door hinge. To keep the door closed, I employed the force of magnets. First, I drove some short screws into the door frame. Then I super glued some strong magnets over those screws. Over time, I ended up adding more magnets. Your mileage may vary. 
Another thing that Harrison said I should add was a window so I could peek at my spool of filament. I laid out this window and cut it out again using that super sharp knife. Then I cut out more of my PETG plastic and screwed it into the side of my enclosure, making a nice tidy window. Now I can look in and see how much filament is left during a print without having to take off the entire enclosure. The last thing I did was to cut out a notch in the back for the power cord. I found that the power brick did actually fit inside the enclosure, but I have a feeling it's better to leave it out where it won't overheat. That was the very last step and the enclosure looks pretty great. It has enough room so that I can reach in to retrieve the SD card and monkey with the Ultimaker's controls. I also added a thermometer inside of the box so that I could keep an eye on the temperature. Sure enough, the box heated up and stayed warm rather nicely. As a bit of a torture test, I printed a large flat Rebel Legion logo. This was without any kind of bed adhesion. That's right, no glue, no raft, and no brim. I'll tell you what, it did pretty well with only one point of the logo lifting off the bed. I went and ran that print again, this time using just a brim and it came out perfectly. In fact, it was actually quite difficult to get off the bed which I'm totally okay with since the print turned out so great. So far the results are quite promising and I'm getting excited to print more ABS on this machine. In fact, the first thing I'm gonna print on this is I'm gonna print my Boolean Gemini again, only this time in ABS. And I'll tell you what, this was a really fun, really quick, super cheap build. I already had all the tools lying around, you probably do too. So if you've got a printer and you wanna print an ABS, I recommend you give it a try. You could even customize the dimensions of the box to fit whatever printer you're using. Thank you again to my pal Harrison for all the tips on this build. Again, check out the links down below to all of his work. It's really inspiring to see the amazing work coming out of his team over at Fulpin Props. Hey, thanks so much for checking out the video. If you think this was helpful or if you have a 3D printing enthusiast friend you think might wanna build something like this, do me a favor and go ahead and share this video with them. As I said, all the tools and materials, well, they're linked down in the description. And of course, if you have any questions, leave me a comment. That's all I have for you. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you all in the next build. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe so you don't miss any of our new weekly prop and costume tutorial videos. For more goodies, head over to our website where you'll find blueprints, tutorial books, articles, and more. We also have a second channel for our Q&A show and extra behind the scenes videos. Thanks again and happy crafting.